Hello everybody, welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we'll be doing a watercolor painting based off of a photo by, um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce it, Antonio Hyung, and we'll be doing that in watercolor. So here is the reference photo. It's a challenge on a Facebook page, the Tonalism Facebook page. And let's see if we can we save it or kind of just use it at this size. So we'll use that as the reference. So Tonalism Facebook page, photo by Antonio Hyung. And let's get cracking. So if you are new to this channel, welcome. If you're a um, returner, welcome back. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, with this we live stream. Um, so it kind of takes us about three minutes to get everything set up, get everything started. I get my Kindle up on the side so I can see how the video looks. We saturate the paper with water and we set up our palette. So in front of me I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, using a large hake brush to get it wet, and we'll start out wet and wet, and we'll see what needs to be done with the palette. It's been a few days uh, since I painted, work started back up again, and I've had time after work to paint, just been kind of taking a nap and whatnot. So. Even though I haven't painted in a few days, I feel like it's been years. You take one day off, it's, it's crazy. Okay, so while that paper stretches, we'll take a look at the palette, see if we need to adjust anything. Um, let's see. Got our shop rag. Clean off the center. I don't think we really need to add um, much paint to it, so we'll kind of just jump into it. Alright, so we got our medium hake. Flatten out the paper. And we'll get cracking. Alright, so with this, we'll focus on um, some raw sienna for the yellows. Make it some fresh straight from the tube. I think we'll use copious amounts of that. And we'll even play with some lemon yellow. I haven't used lemon yellow in the sky in the longest time. For me, lemon yellow pushes green very quickly. It just has to look at another color and it starts turning green. We'll set it up. area. I'll try to leave some of the whites of the paper. There, there's our horizon line. The reflection's coming down. It will lower it some. Okay, so that's lemon yellow. Like I said, copious amounts of the raw sienna. We'll kind of play around this. So even though we're going wet and wet, the paper isn't super saturated. Um, and we are using straight from the tube raw sienna right here. Just kind of playing around with the contour of those clouds. Look at that. 
raw sienna down into the water. It's very soft down here. Flatten some. grab some ultramarine I don't really want that straight from the tube I feel like that would just be too too strong just I guess too chromatic would be the term but mixing it with the raw sienna it's gonna kind of gray it down like that this will be the far horizon line which I'll come in again darker More of a wash up here. Even lift up along the edges. A bit of lighting on that cloud. So it's using a paper towel there. And then we have the darker portion of the cloud. up here I'm trying to limit the lemon yellow ultramarine combination just to prevent the green from taking place reflections will come down area and we have a strong bank right here so so far we've only used the lemon yellow the raw sienna and ultramarine let's um let's build up our darks now in the cloud and the water everything's very light for this, let's use thalo blue. I haven't used thalo blue in the longest time. It's really strong, and I'm not going to use it by itself. I'll grab that, and I'll grab some um, burnt umber. Now, burnt umber, since I'm pulling it, I feel like I want to pull this one from the tube. There we go. Because of the thalo blue, you see how blue it is on the screen. Get a little bit of that. Mix these to get a dark. dark foreground. Even that tree line is really dark. I'm just trying to get a little variation in it. Here we see a little bit of the water line and then reflection coming down. We can see that the reflection gets on a more browner, burnt umber side in this region.
the paper dried pretty quick. I did not go super wet and wet like I usually do. And it's limiting me here, so I'm gonna spritz a little bit of water on. I seem to be just getting a thin stream from this spritzer. When things go wrong, everything goes on wrong, right? Let's see. Why is it shooting a straight line? Let me see if y'all can see it. Yeah, it's just shooting a line. Yeah. That's how we'll get water on there for right now. How's that sound? Maybe find a different texture. Okay. So, start darkening up this cloud. See, we have that thalla blue coming through. And if you wet an area like that, you might have a tendency to start getting that uh, cauliflower effect. So I need more pure paint. Grab some more ultramarine. Just come down here. Get a little horizontal texture to the top of the water. over this darker fallow blue area. And for a fast and loose painting, kind of a study, this is close to the, the, the done side, to be honest, because I mean, it's just the clouds and sky. Um, I'll take a look and see what we can refine. Let's do a dry off. If you have earbuds on, cover your, um, watch your ears. do is we'll just kind of take the squirrel mop and just play around on top of this um, use it now 
as an experimental piece. So we went fast and loose, wet and wet with a hake based off of that photo. Let's grab some ultramarine. Let's liven things up. So I'm just glazing ultramarine on top. That's quite a change right there. But what I'll do is I'll place it over it and then I'll use the paper towel to lift those areas. So now at this point it's just purely experimental and me playing around. And that's um, Hammy, the cat, crying to come in the art room. Okay, so this is Ultramarine Wash. Let's bring him down below. very high key right now, very chromatic, which isn't really my, my, my cup of tea. So now let's lift some of these spots. This is where that lemon yellow was. So I'm lifting that so you don't get really that green effect there. Back Come here, there we go. Mm -hmm. Water down here. Okay. Now I'm going to do another draw off and I want to look at things in a kind of darker direction. So let's do the dry off. Now, well, like I said, this is just playing around, experimenting at this point. Um, let's grab our little sushi tray and we'll put out a black and we'll now play with that. Let's see what blacks we have available. We got lunar black. That should be good. So this is Daniel Smith's Lunar Black. Um, I don't usually use black too much in watercolor painting, but um, we're gonna use it in this one. Okay, so let's see. Let's kind of get a, a wash with it first.
Now with black, you do get quite a drawing shift. Usually I just use Payne's Gray, but I'm in um, just pure experiment mode where I'm not happy with the current product, the current results. So it's just kind of play around, see what happens. Gives me some time to experiment with the uh, squirrel knot, the different gestural marks. Let's me listen to Hammy cry, wanted him to come hang out. I let him in for a bit, and Haynes came in as well. Haynes was doing good, now Haynes is playing around. So it is getting some darker aspects there, kind of washing, mopping, and layering. So this is the Daniel Smith Lunar Black, but I really don't have a preference for a watercolor with black. In fact, if I had grabbed black gouache, I would have used that. Kind of whatever jumped into my hand first. I'm just treating it like mountains. We might even grab the white gouache and play around with that. Alright. So we see that it's darkening up. And pulling away from, I keep on using the word chromatic. In fact, I you know, said that earlier. I'm more of a tonal dark painter. That's why this is from the Tonalism Facebook page. In this challenge. But this is kind of experiment with layering and washing in. Let me throw in a little bit more darker aspects before we do the next dry off and see where everything's at. Oh, I feel so bad that Hammy isn't in here, but he is the more exploratory one and having oil paints in here. It's, I don't think cats understand, you know, that, that some of that's not healthy for them, kind of darkening that top ridge. So I apologize for the, for Hammy in the video. Hammy, I'll be back out in a bit. I might wind up just succumbing to letting him in. And I think he heard that. I think he said, yeah, yeah, let me in. I don't want too many harsh edges in this sky. And neither does Hammy. But if I let him in, he's got to not climb all over. Hammy, if I let you in, you can't climb all over, okay? Yep. All right. Hey, what's up, Hammy? I 
He's seriously walking right out. No, he's still here. Yep, you are. <laughs> okay. So what I'm thinking is, I'll darken this up, and then I'm going to grab the white gouache, and we're going to play with that. Yep, we're going to play with the white gouache. These darker reflections. Darker wash in the cloud here. Just once I use that white gouache, we have the chance of having um, a lot of chalkiness. So I'm just trying to avoid that as long as possible. With the fast and loose and just going straight to the black, I am getting quite the contrast in this area, which is quite nice. And then we'll use the white gouache to accentuate that. More textural effects, if possible, just to Get that land there. One thing I've noticed about cats is that they don't seem to know where their tail is. You know, they'll knock their tail into everything. I'm not sure why they do that. I'm just looking at the uh, video feed and I want that cloud darker. Alright, so let's um, dry this off, see where we're at. For the sake of experiment, I know I've been talking about the white gouache, but we're not there just yet. Let's take a unifying wash of raw sienna over everything. All right, that should be enough to cover this whole thing really gonna pull back that contrast but I'll try to lift up and we'll play with the the white like I said don't be afraid to sacrifice to experiment the experiment here is obviously just wash after wash playing around with how it lays out and um, I felt things weren't too unified, so I thought that this glaze essentially would help out. Maybe I've been in a oil painting mindset. Let's see if we want to lift out any lights. Bring out a little bit there. 
I'm liking this effect. This is interesting. It's taking away those harsh edges that I was talking about in the sky that I really didn't want. We do have some radial light effects kind of pointing out from that spot. We might be able to get a, um, a little bit of that. A, lot, a little bit of white in the water. Let's do a dry off and take a look. I feel like the paper eventually gets to a point where it's like, all right, I can't handle anymore. Um, this is the Stonehenge Aqua 140 pound um, cold press. So, even though I do feel like it's at that point, and I don't know if that's a true statement or not, I just, um, something that I feel like it hits a point where it starts buckling too much and can't handle it. But I'm gonna do another wash of the raw sienna. And this was kind of just because I'm not really happy with how it looks right in here and here, so those two locations. And I think I want to blue this area a little bit more, so we'll see what happens. Grab some ultramarine. So I have a little bit more blue in some of these regions. So just feed it kind of into that wash. It's a little bit too much, but we'll go with it. So, another dry off, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we'll grab the white gouache and play with that.
Okay, so paper should be dry enough. And let me find a tube of white wash. It should be over here. Not crying the whole time on the video stream that anymore, right? Okay, so we got some white wash. We're gonna use this to highlight and accentuate different areas. I think we'll use the squirrel mop. We'll see how much finesse we can get. Usually with watercolor, the tradition is to leave the whites of the paper. Um, there's a few different ways to achieve that is through masking fluid or just kind of leaving that area out, kind of just omitting um, that spot when you paint, uh, putting tape over it. Uh, scraping back with a credit card, using a razor blade. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can achieve that. Um, white gouache is frowned upon in the watercolor community, mainly due to gouaches push towards um, oil painting. I believe that was the case. You know, it's just um, they wanted watercolor to be in its own right so uh, critics and whatnot you know set forth rules and ideas about watercolor that was during the Victorian era but if you ever want to use white paint feel free don't let people's other opinion and thoughts inhibit you as they say, um, JMW Tur Turner, he used gouache and he pretty much invented everything in regards to um, watercolor. He would use, instead of like, um, he would use bread, I think, to, to lift up stale bread, I think. He had a lot of different techniques. Get a wash of white going. I'm gonna grab some raw sienna into this. And a mixture of the two is gonna make it stand out. So I'm mixing it on this, if uh, on this little sushi tray. If I had 
mixed it on the palate, that chalkiness can um, kind of permeate and corrupt everything. But you'll see how the mixture of the two will stand out. And sit on top of what's there. A little bit of dry brush, kind of sweep with it and have fun. some stronger raw sienna and you see how strong that that is and how that jumps out So that's playing around with the squirrel mop, getting texture, seeing what's going on. Let's put a little highlight over this tree line. Let's um, grab some burnt umber. Narson. So here's burnt umber with the gouache. You get kind of that reddish. It was not what I was going for. There's a surprise but I can use that for some texture I wanted to get a little bit darker let me pass over this white Have that kind of receipt back a little bit compared to the other whites I could probably at this point just grab my gouache palette which is this guy right here. Next time I go art shopping for art supplies, if you all would be so kind to remind me to buy another one of these trays, I need a third one for, um, for complimentary pairs. So this is a black wash I'm using the one thing I'm not the biggest fan of with the um, squirrel mop 
and it's probably it's it's me it's the application that I'm using is the uh, rounded brush strokes that take place Let's darken up. this is the um, the gouache that's black I'm not sure which one I usually use um, the Vinci brand gouache with the black here. We can come across right there. All right, let's do a dry off and take a look, see what we have going on. looking at the um, the live stream off to the side to see if there's anything that I want to work with I'm not too fond of the edges on these clouds they didn't come out as um, nice and poofy as one would want them to be so let's see if we can play around with that Oop, that's like pure just a lot of water. Let's see, and you know what, let's just go for it. Let's just experiment. Let's see how that affects it. that. We'll probably have to leave this one. completely dry but 
I don't want to keep the blow dryer just going to go. Let's see. I think we'll leave it this one at this. Um, a lot of experimentation took place with it. I think I'm going to come back to this scene. I don't think I'll paint on top of this one directly. I'll probably start it again from scratch. There's a lot of things I liked about this experiment. A lot of things I didn't. But um, I really did like the unification that took place whenever I was doing the washes with the raw sienna. Um, the textured marks of the gouache, that's on me that I need to experiment with. Um, scene wise, I mean, I like the scene and whatnot. But I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, hopefully tomorrow or the next day I'll be back and we can uh, reapproach this um, this scene. So I'll talk to you all soon. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.